Hi, this is VK4 Golf X-Ray Channel, uh, again with another receiver. Um, going back a fair bit behind some of the other receivers we've had, this is a VC348. Um, 100,000 of them made between 1938 through to the 1950s. A very popular, small, compact, portable receiver. Um, intended initially for, for airborne use, but was used in a lot of uh, other applications as well. Um, covers uh, uh, basically like a long wave, 200 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz, a then HF range of 1.5 megs through to 18 megahertz. Um, fundamentally an AM set, but we'll receive a single sideband, sorry, we'll receive CW. Fundamentally an AM set, but we'll receive CW with an onboard CW BFO. Um, I've had this particular set myself about six years ago. I went through it, it's fully aligned and uh, operates well. Um, the power supply in this particular receiver um, is a dynamotor supply. Um, now the dynamotor in this is actually an ARC-5 dynamotor which has been modified uh, to bring it isolation so that it um, will work in this particular set. Um, the standard uh, dynamotors for this are quite hard to come by. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll switch it on and we'll have a bit of a tune round and see what we can uh, what we can see. Now the dynamo inside runs off 28 volts, as do all the heaters. They're strung in uh, series parallel, and uh, there's about 200 volts on the uh, the anodes of the devices inside. Um, the unit is fairly original. It allows us to turn the brightness up and down. Let's turn the volume down a little bit here. Uh, I just wanted to have a listen to WWV. It, Comes a little bit low scale on this particular receiver. Uh, if we find it at all, there it is there. So this WV. I'm going to just tune up from from 10 megs to see what else we've got on this band. It's again late afternoon in Brisbane, Australia. It's a very slow motion dial. A very nice feel to it. Um, very low friction, but a uh, nice worm drive inside. We'll go through to the, the broadcast band, there should be a few strong signals here, and particularly one at uh, 11 7. So that's Radio New Zealand, um, in the afternoons here, comes in quite strong. Let's see if anything else there. Chinese station starting to come through now, it's fine. Okay. Right there. And we'll just try one of the uh, 20 meter bands. Now, the band selection is done by central dial here. This gives you your uh, highest band. And we'll just try and tune down into 20 meters. I haven't had a listen this afternoon yet. I don't know if it's on, if it's open or not. Well, now for for this mode, we tend to need the BFO on, and we'll turn the ABC off. So we'll just take down a shade, switch it across to manual, BFO on, BFO slightly offset. I'm going to turn the audio up a little bit here. Now the audio, or the increased volume pop here, controls both front end and, and audio gain stages. I'll just uh, switch the crystal in.
very quiet. It sounds like someone tuning up in the, uh, the background there. Let's we'll see if they come up. quite reasonable fidelity to single sideband but um, yeah it's, the band needs to be uh, open stabilized in those lights. Not a lot uh, to these particular sets. They have a um, fundamentally a main tune, a dial light brightness, and uh, a crystal oscillator, which you tend to switch in with the CW oscillator. Um, the only other option you've got here is have a manual AGC or basically an automatic AGC. And uh, the rest of it is, other than the BFO, a slight adjust. It's very basic. Um, I think the valve count in it's about nine valves and uh, tubes, um, and they're all optal based. Um, this particular set um, was in pretty good original condition when I got it. Uh, it had a 110 volt power supply uh, with fixed primary winding, so I had to pull that out and put the uh, the dyno motor in, and that brought everything back to uh, to rights. The this had to be restrung. There was a few bad caps, um, a good realignment. I think there was a couple of high resistors, but fundamentally it worked. Um, considering this set must be now 60 years old, um, maybe getting on for 70. Uh, it's it's quite impressive. Um, it was paired with a, an Art 13 I had, and uh, the intent was to get, you know use it a lot for transmission and reception, um, but uh, due to, to work commitments, I couldn't actually get around to using it. Uh, and in the end, I sold the Art 13. Someone uh, was, was pestering me for the Art 13, and then I have uh, retained this until recently. And I, I'm now considering uh, perhaps moving this guy along to someone else to look after for a while. Anyway, let's just see what else we've got on the band. Oh, 
crystal filter in here is fundamentally just a single crystal about 915 kilohertz nominally and the uh, set when I got it just it wasn't working um, now the crystal itself is housed in a form of like Bakelite enclosure that's where I can describe it um, there are some stainless steel highly polished faces internally and uh, the whole lot's dipped in wax now the wax seeps in and it uh, gums up the crystal as far as I can see and uh, Ironically, just pulling it apart, cleaning it, dipping it in some kind of solvent, make sure all the residue's off, and reassembling it um, cleared this. So it's uh, it now functions as it should. The whole set, whole set is completely uh, realigned, centered on the crystal frequency. It runs very well. It's, uh, it's got a nice set. The only thing I will comment on is that the uh, unlike a lot of sets of this vintage, the the trimmer padder setup that I'm normally used to seeing isn't there on, on this. Um, so normally you adjust the inductor at the bottom end of the band and the uh, capacitor at the top end of the band to get tracking of the, uh, the antenna, the mixer and the first IF. Um, now this set has, according to the adjust well, the manual, um, you only adjust for a spot frequency um, about 70%, 80% up the band. And this is what this unit has been adjusted for. But I do notice it does drop out of um, uh, out of registration, should we say, as you go down lower in the band. I suspect that if you're really, really fast, you could probably go in and uh, squeeze and um, pull the coils to get them uh, right at one end of the band, and then likewise uh, adjust the capacitor at the other end of the band. But um, I'd be interested to hear anybody else's comments on that because it's uh, an interesting interesting setup. However, uh, these guys were. Uh, we designed just to function, function well in, a, in an arduous condition um, and were kept as simple as possible. Um, probably what, one of the, the best all-round workhorses um, of the 1940s, I would have thought. Um, there wouldn't have been much to have compared with this for its size and portability. Uh, when you look at the, uh, the Helicrafters 28 or the uh, AR88, um, mm -hmm. they're a little bit heavy to put in the Jeep <laughs> or even on board an aircraft. But um, this is this is quite neat, um, very neat receiver. 